Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to be with you. And especially to be with you today. Um, we're coming out of Tubishvat and uh, Rabbi Jenny Solomon led us so beautifully in a practice rooted in uh, recognizing our connection to one another and to the natural world yesterday. And we're coming out of that wonderful experience and heading into Shabbat Shira, our Shabbat of song, um, which is a glorious celebration, a celebration of, of song of how our people have used song throughout our history and, um, and, and how we can be connected to song right now. So Adi, I'm going to ask you if you could go ahead and share our text. Thank you so much. Um, so one of the things that I'm just, I'm bursting with joy um, today is that I get to share this particular text with you. Um, you know, it's hard to choose maybe a favorite text, but uh, this is certainly among them. And, and I brought a little something to show you which is that I have part of these words um, on the atara of the talit that I wear when I normally lead prayers in in my uh, in in my congregation. So uh, so I'm just very excited to share this particular text with you. And um, and for me, it brings together both this idea of the natural world and of song. Um, which uh, Nachman of Bratzel was so connected to, and we hear here in Likute Mahoran. He says, this is the concept of from the end of the earth, we hear in song, and here he's quoting Isaiah. And um, just, we always wanna put in context, so I'll just say, if we were to have a little bit of the ta'am, of the flavor of Isaiah, I would characterize that as hope. So we're, we're right, uh, right at the beginning, um, hearing this quote, from the end of the earth we hear song, but also knowing that the flavor uh, infused within the words that we're hearing is a flavor of hope. Songs and melodies emerge from the end of the earth because melody is produced through the grasses which grow in the earth. I'm gonna say that one more time. It's not normally how we think about where song comes from. Melody is produced through the grasses which grow in the earth. And because the shepherd knows the melody, he instills the grasses with energy, and so the animals have what to eat. And this is the concept of the first blossoms have appeared in the land. The time of Zamir, of singing, of song, of melody has arrived. And now he's quoting from Song of Songs. So the ta'am, the flavor of Song of Songs is passionate love. So we have two flavors with us as we're learning about song and its connection to the earth. Ah, we're getting requests for a louder, louder volume. I'm gonna turn up over here. Hopefully you can hear me a little better. So the ta'am, the flavor of this, um, of this sentence that we've just heard from Song of Songs is passionate love. So we have these two flavors from our texts that uh, Nachman is quoting, the flavor of hope and the flavor of passionate love, um, really overlapping one another as we are immersing ourselves in this idea of music and the natural world. And I, let's say melody and the natural world. In other words, we're, we're taught, the first blossoms grow in the land as a result of their particular zemer and melody, as mentioned above. It follows that through the song and melody, which the shepherd knows, 
He instills the grasses with energy and there is pasture for the animals. So with that in our hearts, with these concepts of love and hope and song and the natural world, just ask you to take a cleansing breath in and out and to find a comfortable way to sit in the body. I'm going to do that with you. For me, I like to sit cross-legged. So find any way of sitting that's comfortable for you at this time. Make any adjustments you need. Any adjustments you need to make in the body. Allowing the breath to move freely in and out. And we're going to use the words that we just studied to guide us as we enter our sit today. Allowing your eyes to gently close and first noticing what you see what you see on the back of the eyelid as your eyes are closed. Perhaps some of the light of the room that you're sitting in is coming in through the eyelid. Perhaps you don't see anything but darkness. Just allowing yourself to notice what's going on. And as we sit, drawing to mind an image of the end of the earth, whatever that means for you, a place far away. Drawing to mind this image of the end of the earth that Nachman tells us is the place where we heard song. where song and melody emerges. Once you've pictured that place in your mind, direct your attention to the ground that you've imagined. And allow yourself to picture an image of grasses bursting through whatever ground it is you've imagined at the end of your earth. Grass is bursting up through soil, maybe even through rock. And imagining a soft wind moving the grasses gently and hearing the sound that is produced when the grasses are moved by the wind.
And now taking a moment to notice the concept of self in relation to the concept of the grasses we have called to mind. Noticing what we might perceive as the difference between self and grass. Noticing what we might perceive as the difference between the wind that moves the grass and the grass itself. And recognizing that just as the grass is moved to create song through the wind which moves it, so are we, like the grass, producers of unique melody Producers of unique melody that moves through us, created by seeds, seeds that we may have planted within our own souls, seeds that may have been planted by our ancestors for us, seeds that may have been planted by a kind, gentle word from a loving friend, and also recognizing those dissonant melodies that arise within us that are planted by harmful seeds, just noticing that they're there, recognizing all the ways that our unique melody flows through each one of us. Yet somehow we are all connected through the soil within which our souls grow, through the wind moving through each one of us. We're going to sit quietly just for about three minutes now.
Shalom, everyone. I'm going to turn back to Mark. It's really wonderful to sit with you. Thank you so much, Karen. What a beautiful bridge into Shabbat Shira. Um, <clears throat> friends, we um, we'll take that melody, that song, lift it up. Um, for those of us who are in mourning, I'm serving a yard site and inviting those who uh, would like to share name or names of those they're remembering today in our collective Kaddish. Uh, today happens to be the third yard site of my own father, uh, Edwin Margolius, Abraham Yaakov ben Moshe, the Pesha, uh, and also my maternal grandmother, Becky Miller and um, invite you to share the name or names in the chat box of those whose memory you're honoring today, lifting up today, uh, whose songs, whose melodies have shaped us in so many ways. And uh, may we continue to sing their songs and invite you to uh, rise in body or in spirit. Join me in Kaddish. Yit Kadao, Yit Kadash, Shemay Raba, Nama Dubra, Hirote, Yamlik Mahute, Kaye Khon, Yamay Khon, Kaye Khon, Kaye 
Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us, and I want to thank you for uh, helping to make the minyan, which enables me to say Kaddish for my uh, father and for my grandmother. Kareth, um, I don't, if you don't mind, I want to put you on the spot, but I wanted to see if you might be willing to uh, do a reprise of that incredible song by Naomi Shemer as a kind of bridge. On, on, we have still a few minutes before our official closing time. Um, so I invite you people to, to stay with your practice. One of the things we like to say at IJS is that we uh, promote continuity of practice. So we don't just practice between uh, in this half hour between 12.30 and one Eastern time. Uh, we, we try to deepen our practice so that we can carry it into the rest of our time. So I invite you to just sit um, and uh, to sit with the words, the melody, the presence, of this, of this incredible song, um, which provides such a bridge between the natural world and the spiritual gift of music and to really enter into Shabbat Shira, the Shabbat of song, song of the uh, Shabbat of liberation, of release and to freedom. Thank you, Kareth. Shall I 
שירת העשבים נעשה ניגון של Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay. I, knew, I, knew, I, I knew you could handle that, but thank you so much. Um, wow. I really don't, I, I'm inclined not to say a whole lot, but um, at the same time, I would love to uh, I would love to bring to the surface um, the clarity of the beautiful teaching and some of the words um, and terms that you use today. Uh, I want to, I'm a little thrown off because I'm just so moved by this, but I want to um, thank Jean Paul for sponsoring our practice today and thank Amy, uh, uh, Amy Singer and uh, Jane Simpkins Smith for sponsoring this. So uh, thanking Jean for sponsoring in memory of her husband Leonard and uh, thank Amy and Jane for sponsoring in memory of uh, Ellen Singer. Um, may their spirits be elevated through this beauty today. Um, so I want to, you know, Kareth, when you were teaching and sharing this, the text, I'm going to put, I'm going to put my, I'm going to screen share here just for a little bit. Um, the word that's, uh, that which, which is the phrase that's on your talit, by the way? Oh, so it's actually, it's actually not directly from this. It's actually from Shirat Asavim, but it is from okay. uh, Nachman. It is the first phrase of that song. I don't know if you can which see it. Which is that? I'm going to go down. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what it's a, no that, that is every so fantastic. Shepherd has her own. <laughs> <laughs> Roa, Roa, Roa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is an incredible, you know, and I, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I didn't know the song um, and it's oh. an unbelievable song. Um, but just to start with, uh, let's start with Isaiah, um, the word that's used there for, that's translated as from end of the earth is kanaf. Um, which also means wings. Um, it really refers to or edges or extremities. And um, so there's also the kind of imagery of birds and wings and how that word is used in Jewish tradition, tacha kanfe hashchina, beneath the wings of shchina, uh, or al kanfe misharim, on the wings of eagles. Um, it just conjured up a lot of imagery for me and how we can understand that. I mean, I think you probably have a lot to teach her about this, about where the relationship between nature, birds, grasses, trees, the heart and song, um, poetically, you know, just, you know, do, we can do magnetic poetry with those words right there. And just you know, keep rearranging, keep rearranging them, and and evoke the same thing. And then there's nigun, of course, which is wordless song. Right? Anyway, I guess what am I, if I can make this into a question, um, <laughs> when when I when I noticed that, I said, oh, that's interesting. You know, kanaf uh, haaretz, uh, the edge of the earth, um, that the zinirot and nigunim leave from the edge of the earth. And if we are the earth and we are the trees, and what are what are our edges, you know, and you invited us to consider that. And my, my first thought was about the grasses, is that my, the grasses of my body are kind of the little, um, you know, the unnoticed hair that is on the skin, right? Mm -hmm. That the grasses that are growing on me. Mm -hmm. um, just to be personal, I also went to my father's graveside this morning you know, um, and, uh, you know, it's, I don't know about other people, but it's something about 
you know, I, I, you know, what, what does a grave mean? And you see the grass growing over the grave and the body of the person, or what does that mean? Anyway, it just was evocative for me about my, for myself, it was about my father's song and the grasses and my living in my skin and my extremities. And somewhere in there is a question for you, Kara. <laughs> Your turn. You know, the, the, the kanaf, the uh, kanaf, is interesting and and actually I love to share this because um, I had this um, experience actually at a, an IJS retreat. Um, I can't remember which one it was, um, but it was at the um, the center in Connecticut, the Isabella Friedman Center. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I mentioned that is that there's a, a pond there. And so there were a lot of, um, geese um, and they happened to have uh, babies um, when I was there and um, the mother geese were super uh, protective of the babies um, and sometimes when we would walk along the path they would come and hiss at us and you know and uh, flap at us with their with their wings and then you would also see them drawing the little babies uh, really close to them so whenever I now um, envision um, you know Kanfe Hashchina that's the vision that is with me is of the of the downy embrace of the mother goose drawing those babies in but which, which I think is like very intuitive and normal, but there's also that really fierce side mm. <laughs> of, of the mama. Um, so it's this multifaceted uh, pr protection um, that's offered to us um, in that, in that Yeah, way. thanks for sharing um, that. I love that, I love yeah. that. You know, so, the other thing is, well, the, the idea of the kanaf representing also the edge yes. made me also think about time. Like right now, we're on the edge of the week, you know, about basically about liminality, about the in-between. Mm -hmm. Or you think about the Israelites, right, at the at Yam Suf. They're at the edge of the water, right? Mm -hmm. they're, at the edge of the, they're at the edge of the land. They're at the edge of the water. That's when the, the, the magic happens at the edges, yes. you know, and at I the also edges of life. When we think about self... And, you know, a great sitting practice is to notice edge of self, right? I'm say more, say more about that. What do you mean by that? So um, this is a practice that was shared with me by a Zen practitioner who learned it from a <laughs> Tibetan practitioner. So you can notice edge of self, notice uh, what we conceive as, let's say we're sitting on the floor, notice mm -hmm. edge of self, notice uh, floor, notice space between, right? And if you spend um, significant time noticing what is the actual difference between these things, we, um, we have to confront the fact that all of these things are actually just our own conceptions that we're placing on them. And, I th and for me, this gets us back to a very Jewish place that, um, that we're, you know, we're putting all of that, all of that conceptualization on there, and underneath all of that uh, lies oneness mm -hmm. and lies uh, the eternal. Um, and I think that 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 is very uh, inaccessible to us on our day to day. Uh, it's one of the things that we're, I think we're looking toward as we sit, but it comes sometimes very naturally. When we ex this is why I think so many people have uh, such intensely spiritual experiences in the natural world. That when we s are are exposed to those differences and see them in their in their vastness, we all of a sudden, with with by noticing those differences, we all of a sudden have this uh, understanding that everything is one. It's a paradox, mm -hmm. which is where we find the truth. Um, 
find oneness at the edges where the other thing about um, about that word kanaf too is that it refers to the edges of the talit and the tzitzit. So there's another connection there. And so think about the the tzitzit as the grasses uh, of you know of our prayer experience and the knots that are made of the grasses. Oh wow, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. Um, well, you know, as usual, I think, how did I not see this? How wonderful to have you doing this <laughs> Friday leading. And I was so like, for me, so like my had such tunnel vision about Tu Bishvat and this week. And uh, for me, my father's yard site that I don't think, oh, Shabbat Bishalach, uh, Shabbat Shira. Um, and I will say this, I'll share, I'll share this, Kareth, because uh, this has been a big theme for me personally this week and partly because of our sit, but not entirely, is having a sense of uh, how important it is, uh, the, the, the unbelievably critical role of, of melody and music to uh, healing and the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all are missing singing together, even though you know, there have been various attempts to make that possible, uh, but that's, you know, we're, we're really grieving not having that and how imp important that is. I'm sure you, you know, more than any of us understand that as a cantor. Um, but on an individual level too, to be able to sing as an expression of the inner life, um, how I yearn for that and how I can stifle that. So I want to thank you for encouraging us to uh, think of ourselves, each of ourselves as that shepherd. Also, the, uh, you got Moses, right, as the shepherd, right, in that role, finding the song yes. with his uh, so-called speech impediment, yes. finding his own song, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he eventually comes up with his own Shirat Moshe, you know, later at the end of the book. So thanks for helping us find our song. Thank you for thank you for bringing that melody. And I, I put in the I put in the chat box. Um, I, I had seen this uh, beautiful classical guitar acoustic version by Oded Mel, uh, Milchner, um, but I'm sure there are many other Wonderful. vocal vocal versions. But um, if you want to just continue to sit, by the way, I would I'm going to put it back in again here if I still have it. Nope. Uh, let me see if I can find. It. I'll put it back in if you want to use it. Um, here, hold on, here it is. While you're putting yeah. that in, yeah. Mark, I'll, yeah. um, I just want to share the, I, I'm one of those cantors who's creating these videos where I'm singing with other people. And tonight I'm, I'm singing with my congregants and doing duets with, with a bunch of my congregants, which is, is really wonderful. Um, but there, there's something that happens when we sing actually in person together that that is that is um real <laughs> if we mm -hmm. can call it real um that overtones are created mm -hmm. so when we are singing over uh when we're creating these videos there's no inter our notes cannot uh interact with each other in space and so when you say that you're missing that even when we have these wonderful things that all of us are doing um, we, we together, and this is about community, right? Which is so important to us. We together create something that we cannot create in isolation. Yeah. So I look I guess in terms of what that teaching was, the edges, you know, the edges can like go like that, but they can't overlap, right? Which right. is what they do when they're together in that way. Yeah. So the best we can do is, is this for now. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. So, by the way, it's University Synagogue in LA. Um, I don't know if people can join into that, Kara, but just yeah, absolutely. Know that. They just can go to our calendar to get the <laughs> unisyn.org backslash calendar. You can get the um, link there. Thanks. And just a shout out also, as long as you're doing that. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, I did a recorded uh, preparation for Shabbat for BJ, B'nai Jeshurun in New York for today that's at 5.30 on their website um, and live stream leading into their Kabbalah Shabbat service uh, today, just to let people know. I know there are a lot of BJ people who join us for this set, but of course these days 
we're all members of every synagogue. <laughs> so it's true. it's true. I'm singing in Chicago and Los Angeles tonight for Shabbat. Incredible. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Thanks, Kareth. Thanks, big, Mark. Big gift. Thank you, Adi Stein, for holding us. Hello, well thanks. done. And Shabbat Shalom, everyone. See you next week. Have a wonderful Shabbat.